lasagnas, it's Dylan Lasagna here, and today I'm just going to be talking about my opinion on something that, well, you guys should talk about too in the comments below. So, here's the topic for today. So, today I'm just going to be talking about the WWE brand extension, which is coming up in about a month or two. The supposed WWE draft is supposedly taking place the Raw Before WWE Battleground, which is not confirmed yet because, well, does WWE know what they're doing? Who knows? Anyway, um, so yeah, the brand extension is coming back because SmackDown is going live on Tuesday, July 19th to go head to head with Monday Night Raw. And with, go with that going live, it'll have its own unique roster. And when I mean unique roster, It'll have its own set of superstars, hence brand extension. Which means Raw will also have its unique, own unique superstars in its own roster. And yeah, so that's basically how it how it'll go. As in terms of champions, we don't really know how it'll work yet. Even in storyline, they don't know how it works. But in reality, we honestly don't know how it'll work yet. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, there are a lot of mixed feelings about this brand extension, like, coming back in 2016. Some people are saying, oh, there are not enough WWE superstars, and, oh, they're going to take away all the top names from NXT. Oh, and, and then a lot of people are saying, oh, this is great for WWE, and the brand extension will be great for SmackDown, and SmackDown going live, that's great. And I'm thinking, well, yeah... This could be great, like, it will be eventually, but we have to take a look at some of the, on both sides of the stick, in regards to this brand extension. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the WWE brand extension. So, how did the WWE brand extension actually begin? Well, as a 10 year fan of WWE, like, I actually started watching WWE in 2006 and didn't really know what the brand extension was until 2000 and yeah actually that same year in like 2000 in summer of 2006 when I started watching Raw and during that summer when I saw DX so I didn't know, even know a show that was called Raw I only knew Smackdown like when I started watching it anyway so the brand extension was brought in when the roster from w the superstars of WCW were coming into WWE, like most of them, because and there were like a shitload of them crammed together. And WWE and Vince McMahon decided that oh, we need to cut this entire roster in half because there are way too many of them, and maybe two different two different shows and unique shows won't be so bad. And so. WWE decided to hold a draft to see which superstars will appear on which show. And they can only appear on one show only, except for, at the time, the WWE Champion. And until the World Heavyweight Championship, like, came back to life. Anyway, um, so yeah, the brand extension came to life in 2002, I think? Yeah, April 2002, and... People are saying that they had also had mixed feelings back then as well because only they they could see their certain su favorite superstars on that certain show. Like Stone Cold was only on Raw, and The Rock was only on SmackDown, and Triple H was on Raw, and Chris Jericho was on SmackDown, and yeah, it brought people at ends on like, and they had their own feelings on how they really felt about the brand extension. And as the years went by, like, the brand extension kind of took its toll on WWE, I guess? Because with the brand extension, they start, they really placed a heavy emphasis on, I mean, they, they literally started competing with each other. They had their own pay-per-views, their own championships. They brought back the World Heavyweight Championship to Raw, and which eventually went to SmackDown. And, yeah, and SmackDown was still... Second, well, still second, whatever it is, like, second, yeah, second fiddle, that's the word. Second fiddle to Monday Night Raw. It, 
it was still less important because it was still like a pre-recorded show that people could just read the spoilers on the computer on. But now with SmackDown going live, they're, they're going head to head directly with each other. But anyway, um, the brand extension was yeah pretty much splitting the roster in half, and then basically only certain superstars can appear on the show unless only. Unless they, they were the WWE Champion, if there was only one WWE Champion. The, the Tag Team Champions, if there was only one set of Tag Team Championships. And the Women's Championship, if there's only one set of Women's Championship. Anyway, it kind of worked back then, I said, because they had enough superstars, but... And, and you, again, you want quality over quantity. That's what I say. Like you want, you want to have the best and the best main eventers, some pretty quality mid carters, and then the guys that are just there on on each show. And yeah, with the brand extension coming back, you still want that from the brand extension back then. So I feel like, yeah, that. That has to play a major factor in they're gonna bring back the the brand extension. That's just my opinion. Everyone else has their own detailed exp like explanation. I'm just like you're trying to explain my side. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like been yeah roster size could be an issue as well. It's like I'm not sure if WWE has enough like space on their roster like. To cut it in half because and besides the fact that they also have to bring guys up from any the NXT especially like Samoa Joe and Finn Balor and maybe Shakura and ah, I keep mispronouncing his name Nakaruma and maybe even Asuka and Bailey they might they might have to take all the top most of the top names from NXT and bring them up to the main roster with Barely any like notable names still down in NXT, which basically is just takes away the NXT brand. Like, but and you have to build it back from the ground up, and yeah, it's gonna be hard to figure out like who goes on what brand. And like, oh, does John Cena go on Raw or does he go on SmackDown? Will become the face of SmackDown and let Roman Reigns be the face of Raw? Yeah, it's just, in terms of, like, space and, like, quality, you, you gotta have, like, the best matches and feuds on, if you want the ratings to go up the roof for both shows. Now, the second issue I want to mention with, like, the brand extension today is, like, who exactly are you gonna put on Raw and SmackDown? Like, who goes to which show? Um... It's gonna be confusing, and also, how do you fill up Monday Night Raw if it's still three hours by that point? Because if you have, let's say, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose all in the same sh show, and then you have John Cena, Rusev, The Miz, and then Enzo and Cass, and etc. etc. On SmackDown, you don't want to hear like, let's say Stephanie McMahon or Roman Reigns cut a long ass opening promo on Monday Night Raw to fill up just to fill up that three hour gap. It it'll just drop the ratings right there. Like, I mean, if if I were WWE, I would just like cut take that third hour off of Monday Night Raw. Like, it's like, how are they gonna use that third hour when if you cut literally cut that roster in half? I mean, are you gonna use that time to build up, rebuild the credibility of stars like Tyler Breeze, Fandango, and who else? Dana Brooke, and who else is Zack Ryder? I mean, and Apollo Cruz and Neville. Who knows? Who knows? 
But all I'm saying is just like, if you, if they're gonna fill up those three hours of raw, if they decide to go there, they better have some like very quality, like best quality feuds. Like, if they wanna succeed, like with this brand extension, the same goes for SmackDown. Like, if they wanna capitalize on this SmackDown going live thing, they're gonna have to pull out that same formula that I just said. The third thing is the NXT factor. Who gets called up and who stays? And how does that affect NXT? It's like, I mean, I'm pretty sure Triple H has a say on who stays in NXT and who goes to the main roster. Or maybe Vince McMahon has a say in who goes to the main roster and Triple H has a say in who stays in NXT. I don't know, because I honestly don't want to see, like, like some old, maybe some old Joe can go to the main roster. And Finn Balor maybe could stay for a little bit longer, and then after maybe after SummerSlam can go to the main roster. Um, shit, Nakaruma, that that Nakaruma guy that I keep mispronouncing, he can he can go to the main roster after the the Brooklyn NXT Takeover special, and then Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode is in NXT. Well, actually, yeah. Maybe he could stay there for a few months, and then he just yeah he because he recently debuted, so he probably is gonna stay there for a few months, and then he'll probably go up to the main roster too. Austin Aries, I don't think he needs to stay there for much longer either, so he could probably go up to the main roster and help build SmackDown. Bailey, maybe until all their stuff. Like a top baby face and Asuka. I don't know if the people are gonna buy into Asuka. Maybe Bailey can go up to the main roster no later than SummerSlam, like after SummerSlam. But it's gonna be like very confusing to figure out like who from NXT gets the call to go up to the main roster. But I just hope that Vince McMahon books them properly. Not, not like what he did with Tyler Breeze and Neville and like what they're doing with Apollo Crews right now. It's just like sad, really. But let's see where they land down down the line when the WWE draft comes. The fourth thing, the fourth concern I also have is championships. It's like, which championships can go on Raw and SmackDown and which champions will stay on just one show? I'm just... I'm hoping that the Intercontinental Championship will stay on Raw and then the US Championship will go back to SmackDown like it was in the good old days when the brands were split. And then the Tag Team Champions can appear on both Raw and SmackDown as well as the the Women's Champion. And then the WWE Champion, there will only be like one World Champion. It, it could also appear on Raw and SmackDown because, well I mean, it's not because it's creating like unequal opportunity for both brand for either brand like but it's because if you bring back the world heavyweight championship or introduce a new world championship it if you, you'll still feel like the WWE championship is the most important championship and the problem most likely rename the WWE world heavyweight championship back to the WWE championship just simply the WWE championship so I think they should probably keep one world title when the brands get split. And then the tag team champions can appear on both brands. So there will be like a huge tag team like like competition between both brands. With the tag team Because the tag team champions are appearing on both shows. Can appear on, and the women's champion can appear on both shows. With... Which can increase the the competition in that division, hopefully, with no rushed matches, hopefully. Um, new championships. Maybe they can bring back. If they were to bring back a new championships, what would you guys like? Want them to bring them back? Leave that in the comments below. But yeah, in regards to the other mid card championships, yeah, I'd, I'd prefer to have the Intercontinental Champion stay on Raw and the US Champion. You go to SmackDown. It's like, I feel like it's better that way.
overall, that's what I really think about the WWE Draft. Um, if you guys didn't really get my opinion on the what I think on the WWE brand extension, um, then yeah, if, if you want to give me some feedback, then just leave them in the comments below and leave me your opinions on the upcoming WWE brand extension as well as SmackDown going live, obviously, in a month. And yeah, this will be very interesting. Like interesting, like interesting couple of weeks leading up to the draft. And interesting like build up to the brand extension return. But yeah, overall I wanna see like how people's reactions are to the WWE brand split coming back again and how this will like affect WWE like business wise and well, overall, in a whole. Well, I'm kind of excited, but then again, I, I'm i kind of concerned like how if it'll work or not today. Alright, lasagnas, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. All my social medias in the description below. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you enjoyed my opinions on the WWE brand extension, leave your comments on the WWE brand extension in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And always be delicious.